One of the things I noticed when I came to work for the Irish Peatland Conservation Council is um, where we're based. So we're based in the Bogavanna Nature Centre, which is on a little mineral island called Lully Moor. And it's actually surrounded by the Ballydermot Works, the Bordemona Works. And before I moved and came to work here, I was living in Galway. And um, like my, my dad, you know, uh, he's from East Galway and we, we cut turf on um, Clonmoylan Bog um, when I was growing up. And, um, you know, one of the things I noticed was that it was so industrial coming to this part of, of Ireland. I didn't realise, you know, when you're cutting turf out on the bog and and you kind of, you can see there's still bog there, you know, it's still nearly, it's not, it's degraded, but it, it, it's still there. And then I came to see where all the industrial um, activities were going on. It was quite shocking at the time. Um, now, the Irish Peatland Conservation Council um, started originally in the 1980s, the early 1980s, and it was on the back of um, an organisation called the Dutch Foundation for the Conservation of Irish Bogs. And there was a fella called Matthias Shelton, and he was looking at the transition. He was from the Netherlands, and he was studying the transition of how bogs changed from east to west across Ireland. And he had noticed himself there in the 70s at how much was disappearing. And of course, in the Netherlands, they had cut most of their bogs away. And so they were looking at trying to conserve and trying to spread the word of conservation. So he actually raised enough, enough money in Ireland and the Netherlands to preserve three bogs in Ireland. And then he, they handed them back to the state. And that kind of kick-started the ball. And once the organisation was finished, it was only running for a few years, I think, um, the Irish Peatland Conservation Council was set up on the back of that. And originally they were they were based out Cable Street in Dublin. Um, now this building that I'm actually in, and this links up with the Just, just Transition, this building was originally, um, originally it was owned by uh, an English military family um, who owned the whole little Lonemore Island. But once the, the Land Commission um, eventually owned it, um, they they split up the land into different different portions and the different families there now and this this was um, this was the farm building for Lullymore Lodge, um, but it eventually became owned by the Farm Advisory Board, and the government knew at the time. So this would be maybe the forties, fifties, sixties. The government knew at the time that all the bogs were going to become you know extinct at some point. The the peat extraction would finish. Um, so they set up here a big Dutch greenhouse, and they spent you know I think it was fifteen twenty years growing different food in the greenhouse to see what the government could use all the cutaway peatlands for once once peat extraction had come to an end. And one of the things they found was that, um, you know, peatlands are so nutrient poor that if you want to grow anything in terms of agriculture for providing food for, you know, horticulture, that it's, you know, it's not feasible. You have to add too many nutrients and it becomes uneconomic to actually um, to, to use the, the cutaway peatlands as, as, as um, a, you know, a, a source for growing food in that way. So, you know, the, the government knew a long time ago that th this was coming. Now, no one knew that it was going to be that quick. I mean, you know, even though the IPCC had been campaigning since the 80s for sustainable management of the peatlands, no one really knew that it was just going to be, you know, uh, such so sudden. Um, so the IPCC, you know, we have always called for a just a just transition. We've always called for the, the, you know, the end of extraction of peat as well. But, you know, we didn't want it. We don't want people to be affected by it. You know, if um, I was at a meeting on Tuesday with um, Minister Malcolm Noonan about the nature, nature restoration law. And one of the things that was highlighted in the, media, the, the, the meeting was that, you know, for every kind of one euro that you're putting back into the environment, you end up getting about six or seven euros back. Now, some of that is priceless you know because some of it is in the amenity and the community value of it um but it just kind of shows and you know there's a real kind of change in in, in opinions we see um that, that, have, that, that have come and we're really looking forward and see it's a great opportunity um for instance the reason why Bordemona set up um just here in this area and this, this Ballydermot works which surrounds the Lunnymore Island is that it's actually the largest piece of contiguous raised bog originally um within the bog of Allen so it's around 7,000 hectares and of course then you have the mineral island so they could have the factory and everything on hard hard ground and then they were surrounded by the bogs and they could they could extract peat and you know they had all the facilities there near them as well um and you know um when we heard that, that they were finishing and we thought this was a great opportunity because one of the things that um, a lot of the scientists are showing in Ireland is that we're missing conservation at a landscape scale. 
So we have our 53 you know, protected raised bog special areas of conservation. There's about 70 natural heritage areas um, that are set aside, you know, raised bogs for conservation. But there's no actual one large expanse of raised bog, which would um, show, you know, a, be a piece of what the original Bog of Allen looked like at one time. I mean, most the Bog of Allen originally covered most of the east of the Midlands. No consensus of where it started or, or stopped. Um, but this would have been the largest chunk within that. Um, so it's a massive opportunity. And of course, you know, um, with without the you know that the, the massive industrial influence um, here in here in the in Kildare as such, it's something has to take that place. Um, you know, tourism is obviously definitely going to be a, a a a big major factor of that, but it also needs the support, and there has to be a diversification, I think, as well. Um, when Bordemona announced that they were going to use this, um, they're going to apply for a wind farm on this um, great expanse of raised bog. We were kind of hoping that they're going to take a big um, effort into biodiversity as well and conservation and take advantage of that. So we, we actually started up like um, a, a smaller organization called the, the National Peatlands Park. Um, and we've been promoting that to the communities as well and to the county councils. And it's been accepted into the county development plan as um, a, some actions that they're working towards. So, and where we are in the Bogav at the Bogavala Nature Centre, it's very hard to get visitors here. You know, we're out, we're out very rural. There's no bus, there's no trains. Um, people have to get the train to Kildare, say, and they get a bus or a taxi out to see us, to see us, unless it's, you know, a, a coach group. Um, and that's, you know, they're the kind of supports that we, we 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 feel that need to be actually introduced as well. You know, there needs to be a proper transport infrastructure so that we can get people out here to learn about peatlands as well. Um, we've noticed in the in the county development plan that you can we we're going to be getting those the greenways and the blueways which are linking up, you know, um, and it's going to create a much more better infrastructure and um, it's going to link all these different areas up together, um, but also. With this great expanse of bog beside us, the Bally Dermot works, the Lonely Moor bog, there's going to be peatways hopefully introduced through them as well. So it's really good in terms of the amenity. And, um, you know, it's 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 a big change in the area going from an industrial landscape into something which, which is now not, it's not going to be industrial as such. Um, and it's, it's I, I see it as a big opportunity. I really want um, all the support in there for everyone. With the IPCC, like I'm actually I'm the policy officer and the fundraising officer, um, but I was quite lucky when I joined the IPCC in that the fundraising schedule, you know, it was already kind of already been worked out when I started. But we we um, we would raise funds. Um, we have a membership system um, where people join as a friend of the bog, and they give us an annual donation, and we we publish a magazine twice a year and send it out to our members. You know, and uh, we, you know, we let them know what projects we've been doing through the year and how we've been campaigning, um, and and also we would um, we would uh, apply for grants for different projects. You know, so something like the leader funding um, or the MPWS sometimes have grants like the the Peatland Community Engagement Scheme, where you you know, so we would actually you know design a project um, and bring it to completion, and then. Uh, uh, raise funds that way, you know. Um, and the other thing is, um, we're a national charity, but we also have kind of international reach as well. Um, so we would have international members that are interested in what what we're doing. Um, we we never have lots of money there, and we're not for profit. So what we actually have is a, a protected bog fund. So all the money that we we raise, that the profits goes into this protected bog fund, and it can only be used for purchasing threatened peatland. Um, we brought the first site since I joined IPCC there last year. We we um, able to purchase Ket's Lock in um, in County Clare, which is just below uh, Trump's golf course. So now that's another site. So we have six nature reserves now. Um, yeah, we 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 do a lot of a lot of application for projects. You know that's that's our main source of funding. Um, so directly with the just just transition, um, I think like we have involved in Pobel and things like that in, in the past. Um, I don't know if any of you, any of you else, have fundraised in that that kind of way. I think we're kind of quite lucky in terms of the environment at the minute. If you're looking for expertise, um, 
like there are some you know community initiatives like the community wetlands forum which was kind of initiated to kind of get lots of experts together and also kind of um find a way of of bringing them into the communities as well so you know if there's a community group that wants to put a boardwalk up or you know create a walkway there are there are some of these these places now like the community wetlands forum that you you can approach on social media and they might be able to point you in the right direction um and ourselves as well you know um we 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 would get lots of phone calls you know um in the office here from people trying to look at um where they can get um compensation for cutting tarp and things like that and we'd we'd point we'd point them off um into the right direction you know towards the government or you know a lot of people still, still don't realize that you have the national parks and wildlife service who um you know manage um islands nature and you know uh manage the wildlife crime and things like that um and they would also have a lot of experts as well that you'd be able to put put people towards um you, we would apply for you know uh, when we we're applying for funding for some projects sometimes it's a bit of a stipulant of the of of the actual funding application that you would have to have someone there to to oversee your project and um you'd have to put you know you'd have to put a name down and um that can be sometimes you know that could be a bit tricky sometimes because you need to make sure that the person you you are actually the name you're putting down is 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 um uh, reputable as well um so so yeah it's uh it's, it's quite good it's a good time i think at the minute in terms of the environment expertise anyway which is what we would be usually looking for i think i'll say think outside the box there's going to be a lot of diversification needed you know there's a good there's a, there's a big hole i think kind of um opened up and a lot you know um i think uh the more people that try and you know some things are not going to work it's not going to stick um some things will work so I, I i implore people to get out there come up with ideas and um see if you can make them work <laughs>